Hey everyone, this is Nate from Get VoIP, and today we're discussing Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP. Let's get right to it. Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, is a signaling protocol that establishes, maintains, and terminates real-time media communication sessions between two or more parties. Put simply, SIP guides computer systems to synchronize their technology and establish direct media communications, voice or video calls, over the internet. SIP achieves this through a series of back-end messages each user's software sends to other parties involved. These messages contain information and data that establishes the call. When a user initiates a SIP application, their device sends a request to the SIP server, which forwards the request to the recipient's SIP server, which then forwards the message to the recipient's device. Whenever a request reaches the server, the software sends a receipt back to the sender. This back and forth communication occurs in nanoseconds between all parties involved in the call. Each party using SIP acts as a request sender and responder. The SIP protocol relies on the communication between several network elements, user devices or endpoints, wireless network connectivity, proxy servers, and registrars. SIP enables software systems like VoIP to communicate via service requests and messages, transmitting data between each other. This process provides the basis for all SIP communications. Therefore, SIP requests and messages form the basis for all SIP capabilities. The following requests enable SIP communication capabilities. First, user authentication and registration. Second, inviting all users to the SIP session. Third, determining which codecs and media stream protocols the session will use. Fourth, making adjustments to the session when necessary. Fifth, sending text and chat messages during the session. Sixth, transferring calls to different users. Seventh, notifying users about software or streaming updates during the session. And eighth, ending the session. SIP establishes real-time media communications, including voice, video, and messaging. Therefore, SIP is used for a variety of unified communications purposes, such as those shown here. Now, SIP trunking is when a company connects a virtual phone system to its on-site PSTN system, thus integrating VoIP functionality with Landline. To set up SIP trunking, a business usually purchases a session border controller, a device that controls data flow between virtual phone systems and Landline. Next, the business subscribes to a VoIP service provider, who provides VoIP via a hardware or software-based SIP server. With the session border controller and SIP server connected, the company has an on-premise VoIP phone system capable of making calls via the internet and landline PSTN. Voice over internet protocol, or VoIP, is the technology of making calls over the internet, while SIP is a protocol that initiates real-time media sessions like VoIP. The two protocols work together, with SIP establishing VoIP calls. For a further breakdown of SIP versus VoIP, check out our detailed comparison of these technologies linked in the description box below, both in article and video form. The video is also linked at the end of this video in the end screens. Compared to landline phone systems and other communications protocols like H323, SIP offers several key benefits. Firstly, it's cost effective. Second, it's low maintenance. Third, it's easy to set up. Four, it brings advanced phone system features. Five, it has multiple communication channels. Six, it has scalability and remote access. And finally, accessibility across devices. While SIP provides plenty of communication benefits, it has a few limitations. Firstly, it requires sufficient bandwidth. Second, SIP trunking and on-site PBX require maintenance. And third, there are some security vulnerabilities. To choose the best SIP provider and software for your company, use the following three steps. First, consider which communication channels you want. Second, decide between hosted and on-premise architecture. And third, compare software features and pricing. If you found this video informative, give it a like, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell below to keep up with our journey to simplify the VoIP world. Till next time, this is Nate from Get VoIP.